why you didn't let the crazies like Bolton or or you know the rest of them there, uh, Wolfowitz. Why why you kept them at mid level jobs so they couldn't do any real harm to the country? Please just tell them that. That was January thirteenth or so, two thousand and three. He wrote right back and he said, "Right, I uh, I too had some some." Concerns about that, but uh, I, I don't think that's any problem. I, I trust my son's judgment, and uh, I think it's going to be fine. You know, that was two weeks before they invaded Iraq and you know, the rest of that. So there are certifiably crazy people. Now, why, if Trump wants to have a decent relationship with Russia, which I applaud, you know, people say, "Well, how can you say anything flawed in the same sentence as Trump?" Well. <laughs> A broken clock is right. How many times a day? Two. Okay. Well, here it is. Korea and Russia. There's no reason why we can't have a more decent relationship with Russia except for these military, industrial, congressional, intelligence. Media. Yeah, that's big. Media is the big new new element there. Great. Let me yeah. let me jump in because yeah. I want to get the U.S. Yeah, good. And that's a great place to break. Good. Mm -hmm. Have a seat. And let, uh, let me just ask you to transition. Mm -hmm. uh, you of course you've now uh, established your credentials by um, explaining that you believe that Trump is the worst president in the history of the world. But can you say for sure? that if Hillary Clinton was elected president, <laughs> that it actually could have been more dangerous based on her projection of the kind of foreign policy and uh, encounter she was looking for uh, with Russia, Russia through a no-fly zone. No, I can't say that for sure because I don't believe it to be the case. Uh, I was with uh, Julian Assange three days before the election in that Ecuadorian embassy. He had just finished pouring his guts out to get the information out. Legitimate, uh, accurate, bona fide information, not only about the Democratic National Committee, but all the other stuff that people kept sending him. So uh, I said, what do you think about the election? He said, well, you know, the Germans uh, say it's a choice between a plague and cholera. <laughs> <laughs> I was on my way to Germany, and I was there the next day. I was there during the election. You think that the, the people running the talk shows will be funneled in the United States? You should have seen the Germans then. No, what? It was crazy. But anyhow, uh, the idea was, they say, and it's a divide between pest and cholera, a choice between plague and cholera. Now, I, I thought uh, uh, Hillary was much more likely to get us into the war with, with Russia. Uh, but, and you that's know, your, you should let people go back to that was your expertise. When you were um, in intelligence as a high level CIA person, you were dealing with the Soviet Union. This is your expertise, right? Yeah, I, my graduate degree is in Russian studies, and I had the, the Soviet foreign policy branch uh, back, way back then, back in the day. So, as I, looked, as I looked at this, you know, uh, I was really happy to be able to vote for Joe Stein. Really, really happy. <laughs> but you know, um, just maybe I'll take advantage of this opening here. I, you know, I think I know something about Russian leaders. And I have this picture of uh, Vladimir Putin sitting around with his friends, you know, from the, watching the campaign, you know, saying, my God, look at this, this guy Trump, he's going to something else. Uh, he, he, he's unpredictable, and he, he brags about being unpredictable. Oh, this is just the guy I want on the other side of the Atlantic with his fingers on the nuclear codes. You have to do everything you can to help him win. <laughs> it doesn't parse. If there's one thing, that a Russian or a Soviet leader would hope for in U.S. president is predictability, and in that score, even even Hillary was better than at least you know <laughs> that point of view. And the other thing is, you know, the notion that that uh, Putin 
like everyone else looking at the campaign and reading the polls, the notion that he had a better idea of whether Trump would win, I mean, that's outlandish. I mean, he thought she was going to win hands down. So what's the percentage? If she's going to win hands down, what's the percentage of getting your intelligence people to say, hey, you know, why don't you hack into the DNC anyway? You know, I see what you're fine. Just for fun. Go ahead, do that. She would find out for sure. And they'd be hard to pay. They'd be even a worse relationship with Russia. So those are sort of conceptual reasons why I could never buy Russiagate. And as many of you know, we can prove forensically, forensically, that there was no Russian hacking, that what was given to Julian Assange from the DNC was on a thumb drive. And we think we know who did it. And it will come out eventually, but I hope sooner rather than later.